Hello, my name is Robert Tapley Bustamante. My artist name is Visual Soul, which I formed into a company ran back in the year 2000 while living in Kansas City for two decades. I have a BFA in graphic design. I go by many names. Some call me Busta, Big Bob Reno, Weirdo, to the heck if I know. Buckle your seatbelts as I delve into my work share presentation. Okay. Am I a weirdo? Yeah, so what? You would be too raised around highly questionable characters spewing for TV from TV wearing spandex. I'm an 80s, 80s kid influenced by a buffet of creative gumbo, as I affectionately call it. I witnessed many forms of artistic bravery by innovators who let me know it was okay to be daring, bold, and strange. Simply put, I am a biracial kind of high-powered creative mutant. My financial years leading up to me discovering my artistic talent was devastatingly lonely. No one knew what to make of me, and neither did I until I met this very special woman. She was from a prestigious design firm. Her name is DK Holland, and she's a founding partner of the Inquiring Minds Institute and um, formed a kids' council to encourage kids to be curious and courageous about their futures. So this piece at the left is titled The Freedom to Pursue Our Dreams, and the piece at right is titled Incognito, which won Best of Show at a Lenexa City Hall art show centering around the theme of Latino artworks. Both pieces can be seen in my art show at Arts Connect, currently on display in Nodo. Sketchbooks are a deeply important part of my artistic process. This is how I value my thoughts as an artist, by having complete freedom to explore ideas and concepts in a space free from prying eyes and mouth breathers. These pages do not get seen by many on purpose. It is for me and me only. Do not ask to see. If I invite you in, it is because I value your opinion. Uh, stencils. Stencils are a simple way for me to control where the spray paint goes and where it doesn't go. Here's a stencil I made out of a plain piece of poster board. First, I sketch my intended subject matter, then I hand cut with an X-Acto blade. Stencils enable me to replicate forms and to iterate different color combinations rapidly. The ability to quickly iterate concepts and intended art direction are skills I've honed over the years. Sometimes a rapid sketch will suffice, but for a larger art projects and murals, I find that a tighter Photoshop comp is very necessary to alleviate a client's anxiety. Concepts shown in context have enabled me to greatly further the visual dialogue and cut through potential project hangups. Urban renewal. My overarching motivation is to beautify an existing roached out urban, urban surface, which is falling out of usefulness and into disrepair. I strive to create beauty where none expected to exist. I love seeing the look of surprise and curiosity on someone's face upon seeing unexpected art in an unexpected place in public. Yeah. So how to sum up a project of such scale and, and importance in 20 seconds? Well, I just used three or four of them. So this is proof positive of the uh, power of public art can have as stimulating hearts and minds towards positive lasting impact. Created in 2018, the goal of this project was to create a visual embodiment of the importance of kids of all colors being able to be in one classroom, learning and growing together. This was also created in 2018. This was a collaboration between myself and a local artist. Um, we were hired by the Topeka Parks and Rec to have an idea about rehabbing a basketball court in a barely lifeless community park. This is where creative placemaking can serve as a spark plug for members of the immediate community to feel more excited about their surroundings. The kids' happiness shown here means everything to me. My sunflower bee mural that's shown here had three goals from the client, show our state flower, our state insect, and celebrate the critically important right of women to vote by displaying the historical women's suffrage sash. Shown here is the amazing client, Angel Zimmerman, a woman who is the embodiment of selfless giving towards her community. Live painting, I love some live painting. This is me after uh, painting a can Roxas in 2011 to the Black Keys. I got to paint the Primus, Doom Tree, and, M and Eminem to name a few. My goal was to capture a band's energy and essence in minimal time without hesitation. This represented a major breakthrough in bravery as I, as I was able to focus in a sea of drunken madness like a Zen master and create. Yeah, that was nice. Collaboration, collaboration is a very important component of my artistic efforts, so is empowering and involving my, my teenage daughter, Marissa, in projects to enable her to realize her creative power at a younger age than I was able to. Shown here are the painted sugar skulls sourced directly from Oaxaca, Mexico for the Day of the Dead installation at the prestigious Nelson Atkins Museum of Art in Kansas City. This is my street art hustle. I basically say that stickers are an important part of street art culture, a way to propel and further artistic myst mystique 
there is a power in repetition which feeds upon itself. I created the noodle shape originally with ink on paper in 2012 and have extended it into stickers, t-shirts, screen prints, and the laser etched noodle at the right. Um, it is a modular way for me to experiment with repetition just as Warhol did. Oh, this one's great. I will wrap up by saying that details always matter and that even the best of us can overlook simple things. Shown here is the envelope I received to join this awesome group and my humorous reaction to seeing my name is spelled. They say, stay humble. Well, hey guys, you did it for me and I'm very humble indeed. And I just wanna say stay in the spirit of loving and thank you everybody. Ha, 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 ha.